Hey guys, well, I got my replacement replacement motor. <laughs> uh, this is the Lead Shine 863S68H. Very nice motor. It's just not nice for this particular project. Uh, this is a high voltage motor. It takes a lot more juice than 48 volts that I'm going to be putting into it. Um, this is uh, JMC. Uh, jmcmotion.com this is a 86j12126-650 now they have two that are exactly the same size 920 ounce is what they're calling this one and they have a 650 and also a 230 or something I, double check just make sure you make sure that you get the right specs you want the 650 version now this particular model the difference being this one and the other JMC model the other JMC model has the identical specs as the 863S68H now this motor is more in line with the smaller motors as far as the specs this is a 5.2 amp one thing I did notice about the two um, this one, the casting's not painted here. It's not as smooth and nice as this one. Also, the casting's on the front. This one's been machined. And this one's kind of rough. Here, it's not machined. Uh, those aren't really things that matter too much. Uh, the main thing to me is, does it work? Now this shaft is a D shaft. It has actually two flats on it. One here and then one right here which you can't see um, where this one is round. Um, that may present a problem. There's a flat there and a flat up under here. However, I don't think that it will. Uh, other than that, they're pretty much identical. One thing I did notice is the wiring. Um, it, it just looked a little smaller to me on this JMC model and after examining it closer it's actually printed on here and if I get my super duper glasses I can see uh, the lead shine motor uses 20 gauge wire and the JMC um, although the print is even smaller I think it says 22 gauge and that appears to be about right uh, they're just a little smaller uh, I'd rather have the bigger wire, but you get what you get. So I wanted to kind of show the difference in, in the two motors here. And other than the weight's about the same, probably is exactly the same. Um, and the size, the length is the exact same. So let's get this one hooked up and connected, and I'll show you how it works. All right, now that we've got the Z-axis motor connected, uh, let's run some tests and see how she does. I've got the Z-axis, uh, the new Z-axis motor on, as you can see, and uh, just temporarily connected. And uh, it's just temporarily connected until uh, I make sure that it's going to work. A um, little shadow here, sorry. We've got the Z-axis set up on a velocity of... 88 89 which actually ends up being about a hundred inches per minute uh, This is the same settings. I had it on with the original lead shine motor. So uh, Acceleration is eight. So let's take a look see how well she does Let's try going down All right, she goes down just fine now remember that's jog speed, which is about 50 inches per minute, 50 percent. Up.
Okay, and again, 50 inches per minute. Let me show you here. 50.2 inches per minute. That was down. This is up. All right, let's try 100 inches per minute down. All right, no problem. 100 inches per minute up. All right, very happy, very, very happy. Couldn't get it to do that with the uh, a lead shine 863S 68H motor, which was the high voltage motor. Uh, this motor, same size, uh, different specs, but 100 inches per minute. Seems to be okay. Now, a couple people pointed out a couple of different things that I really didn't kind of think of, but uh, Jason pointed out that if you put the same amount of voltage, which is 48 volts, to the small motor and the big motor, then you're obviously not going to get the same velocity out of both motors because the smaller motor is not going to need as much as the bigger motor and it all made sense I'm sure back in the back of my mind I remembered that uh, and knew that I just kind of overlooked it these motors are supposed to run real cool because they're three-phase motor and the small motors actually do they run very cool even after after having them on for uh, several hours they were still very cool this new motor is also very cool and I'm running it at the same voltage actually as the smaller two motors. Uh, so that pretty much made sense um, what Jason was saying. And I've got these running at 130 inches per minute. Uh, I never did really get these to max out. I think it was around 200 maybe they were stalling uh, or 100. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't really remember. Uh, all I wanted really to do was get these to run at about 130, which they do easily. And this motor, the Z, I just want it to run at 100, which you can see it does without any problem. However, I want to make sure that I have a little reserve torque in there. Uh, it's not so important with the Z as it is the X and the Y. However, I wanted to check it. So let's bump it up with the max for the z-axis with this motor it starts to stall at around 140 so let's set the velocity to 130 right there sorry for that shadow okay so that's the z-axis at 130 click ok and 130 I didn't have any problems with but let's try it again go down okay you can see 130 so that's 30 inches per minute faster than I really want to go uh, so I feel really good about having enough reserve torque there in case I need it uh, hopefully my thinking uh, is correct in that. Now, if I move it up to 140, at 140 it will stall on you. Okay, we've got it at 140, z-axis. All right, let's take a look at 140. see it starts to stall at 140 so I'm thinking 130 is good and I'm happy with that and of course it makes sense you're only putting 48 volts into a motor that's almost not quite but almost twice the torque of the other motor so 
it would make sense that it's not going to run as fast. Thanks, Jason, for that information reminding me about that. And uh, it's just something that I didn't realize. Uh, I'm really sorry if any of you guys purchased these three motors and ended up with a motor you can't use like I did. Very sorry about that. Uh, I don't know. I'm really disappointed in Lead Shine for posting that motor with that the 3DM 683 uh, drive as a recommended drive even at 60 volts it's not going to push that motor very fast without it stalling so uh, if you want to if you're comfortable with 35 inches per minute on your z-axis then that motor is fine otherwise uh, you may want to go with this motor here this is a JMC motor guys just end up just get three of the smaller motors I don't remember if I ever took and pushed this motor on the z-axis I know I didn't do it with the motor on here uh, to see like when it would stall but I know that it did the hundred inches per minute without any problem so now that I've got that problem figured out it's time to move on to some other things I've got to let me turn this on That fan running I've got to tidy up this cord and get it in the cable tray here problem is I don't think I can fit the head of the cannon plug through there so I'm probably going to have to disconnect the wiring on the motor and put it through there which is not a problem actually because now I realize that I want to put this on this side and also, I want to have the cable go out the bottom, so I need to turn this box as well. So I'll have to disconnect the wires for that anyways. Then, then the wiring can come out the bottom of the box and just come down and go up into the cable tray. So I bought some rubber for some weight covers. I don't know if that's what I'll end up going with. Cliff had an interesting design. Uh, his YouTube channel is uh, Thread Express, but Cliff had a nice little sheet metal cover that came up about four inches right here. Uh, I don't know if I can do that kind of setup with the vise because the vise is going to hang off. So I'm still kind of debating uh, which way to go. Um, as far as the front, I think a nice little sheet metal cover that kind of goes over the motor and all when it comes back would be nice again uh, I have the rubber so I may start out with something like that and then just see how it goes very happy and very satisfied now that I've got all three axes moving another thing that I need to check into is the oiler um, since I posted the last oiler video I haven't even oiled these ways. I pumped it enough. I pumped the oiler just enough to make sure that I got oil going to all my ports. And some of them I didn't have the uh, axis all on yet. And so air got in the lines. The air getting in the lines made everything go down to the lowest point, which happens to be the y-axis ball nut up under there I think and I think it's dripping down there because I have wiped this about four times and it still it collects in this corner here now of course you know I'm on dollies here so I'm sure I'm not level but it always collects in this corner um, I'm going to have to figure out some kind of backflow preventer type valve I ordered some and they did come in uh, those things are expensive too I, I'm I'm telling you I think six of them cost me forty dollars so I was a little, little disappointed in those uh, costing so much when these fittings right here you can get ten for like five dollars so I'm gonna see if they're gonna work I don't think they will if they won't work I've got an idea that I'm gonna show you and uh, 
that'll be coming up in another video as well right now I want to uh, make sure that my steps per inch are set correctly in Mach 3 I want to do a uh, test and see what kind of backlash I'm dealing with now that I've got it all assembled so stay tuned for that also I'm going to do a video on setting up Mach 3 and the spindle setup uh, and the parameters for the spindle so and VFD so stay tuned for those videos coming up uh, thanks for watching the videos any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment thumbs up if you like the video please subscribe and most importantly be safe